Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. This is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. That sounds terrible. What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. <laughs> and you are going in SmackDown Live. Who needs Raw? What's up? It's your girl, Sasha Banks, the legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. And you are tuned in to Going In Raw right now. How you doing? Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to. Ty Dillinger, right here at youtube.com forward slash Steven Larson. Also available wherever fine podcasts are, including iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Podbean, uh, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and uh, SoundCloud.com forward slash Steven Larson. And very soon, Spotify. Okay, here's the thing. I forgot to mention this in yesterday's episode, and I apologize for my voice. It's crap for anybody just watching the SmackDown recap and didn't hear me. Talk about this a little bit yesterday in the Raw recap. My voice is absolute crap right now. Somebody yeah. pointed out in our Patreon chat, which you guys can check out every single, usually on Tuesdays, but today, Wednesday, because my internet crapped out yesterday. For $5 a month, you can watch this live stream live. Um, somebody pointed out that I sound like Eric Young right now. Yeah, a little bit. L- a little bit. Ty Dillinger, we choose you. Well, don't ruin your voice for the rest of the I day. I choo, choo, choose you, Ty Dillinger. That's what Eric Young has to say. Um, so we're available, uh, all that place. Here's the thing about Spotify. All right. I did the thing. I emailed the guy. Yeah. I emailed him. I know. And he wrote back. Yeah. We're not on Spotify yet. He says, I have to write him again. Yeah. With the show. Like he gave a list of show, I saw that. show information. I saw that. So now there's another step on the road to Spotify. Yeah. What do you think about that? I upheld my part of the deal. So do we have to have stakes involved in today's trivia challenge then? Um, all I heard was steaks. Yeah, I'm hungry. We're gonna too. eat steaks. Sure, let's have steaks. I had a hearty breakfast today. Um, yeah, I don't know. Look, I I, I want to say that I you know I did, I did what I was supposed to do. I technically, guess, technically, you did. You're you were charged with emailing, yeah. sending one email. I guess exactly. I guess what we can do at this point. Because here's the thing: even if we continue to email this guy back, it might be until WrestleMania, until Spotify. We might not even get on. According to him, he says that only a very small percentage of podcasts make it onto Spotify because they're in like a beta right now. Yeah. So it's not like I can just. We can't just. It's, this is not automatic. It's not a guarantee. This I understand. Is not a guarantee. I would think with the number of downloads we get. By the way, if you go to iTunes. Hit the download or subscribe button. Makes me very happy. Even yes. if you're watching on YouTube, yes. hop on your phone. Write and, a review. Yeah, write a review. Makes it very happy. Um, um, we're, we're also on, on prowrestlingtees.com forward slash going in raw. You, you can, get, can get this shirt. You can get a W Steve W shirt. You can get sweet. a Friend of Unified Championship Wrestling shirt. Or you can get a going in raw shirt. Yeah, man. They have more that, shirts to come. That President's Day sale. Pete Dunn today tweeted out. He said 760 shirts in oh. one hour. Wow. I appreciate all you people. That's pretty good. Man, doing the math on that, he made a little chunk of change he there. Did. Pete Dunn did. Good for him. British working man. Mm-hmm. That's what he is. Hey, by the way, a lot of great suggestions on Twitter. Yesterday we were having this conversation about who would be the, oh, yeah. the young Dunn. member. Pete Dunn. Oh, and that's a, that's just Perfect. like, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. That's I'm a no-brainer. I'm really disappointed that, that I didn't come up with that. I'm disappointed neither of us did considering how much we love Pete Dunn. Yeah. So everybody who said that on Twitter, good Thank job. Thank you very much. Uh, speaking of Twitter, we're on Twitter at Real Going and Raw. That's where we generally live stream things or live tweet. At yeah, live tweet things at MF Steve here, at Joy of Bearding, or at Steven Larson. We have like four Twitter accounts. Too many. Too many. Um and finally, we're on the Patreon. I mentioned that uh, patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson, uh, where you guys can contribute to the show. Send us, I mean, you can send us stuff regardless, um, but you can contribute to the show, make it better, and uh, get some rewards back in the process. That's Correct. A lot of fun. So let's talk about SmackDown while yes. we're sitting here doing nothing, man. Yes. SmackDown last night. Overall thoughts. In a nutshell, SmackDown was. It was a fun show. It was a fun show with a shit ending. Yeah. And the reason why it was a shit ending was simply because of a botch. A very simple. It was mistimed. It was a very, very 
difficult to pull off maneuver. They've only done that spot a small handful of yeah. times in the history of the Federation. Did it feel like that they had trouble even getting to that point? Because the whole the whole end of the battle royal, when it was just AJ against Luke Harper, it felt like they were either the chemistry wasn't right or yeah. they were just trying to find a way to get to that spot that didn't seem forced. I think it was probably both. We'll talk about that in the main yes. event. Let's start from the beginning. Daniel Bryan came out. Number one, I'll, I'll give this. I'll say this about SmackDown. Their um, their uh, opening uh, recaps are vastly superior to Raw's. I don't know if they use the same voice or if they use a voiceover on the Raw ones. I can't recall. I but don't think they use a voiceover on Raw. I don't think they do either. I think they just do like a standard like vid- they tell it through the video and dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They use the vo- they use the standard WWE voiceover guy for SmackDown's video. And I just I mean I think I've noticed it in the back of my mind before, but like, to this morning I was rewatching it. Or I watched like the first ten minutes this morning because I, I missed it last night, um, and I, I really liked that. It. It, it gives a very cinematic feel mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. I like it. Mm-hmm. I try, you know, I try to bring out. I try to talk about the positive. Yeah, we try to stay positive on the show. Try to stay positive. Uh, Daniel Bryan came down for a promo. Yeah, and he said it crushes my soul to do this, but I have to ask Naomi to come down. Yes, and Naomi is injured apparently now. Yeah, she has a brace on her knee. Although I don't think there's been any official word as far as what her injury is there has not been an official word other than she is injured she has not been performing at house shows no and last week um they said that uh, on smackdown that since she was injured she wouldn't have to defend her belt against alexa bliss last mm-hmm. week mm-hmm. and it was more or less that match scheduled for this week Right, but I guess the injury must be more severe than uh, initially thought. That would seem to be the case because uh, Daniel Bryan asked Naomi to re- relinquish mm-hmm. her SmackDown Women's Title, mm-hmm. and she did. Mm-hmm. Um, it was an emotional moment. Mm-hmm. You could tell for Naomi. Um, she delivered a great promo, saying, "You know, uh, it, it took her, you know, the work it, she put in to get to that point to win the title, and then it, it, it devastated her to have to." Let go of it, yeah. But that also, she's gonna when she's back, when she's healthy, she's going to get that title back. I really wish she would have dropped an actual f bomb. She said they're gonna feel the freaking glow. Yeah, have a grave and she's they're gonna feel a motherfucking glow. Can't do that on. You can't do that on WWE product. You're not allowed days. to do that. No. But would you have liked it better? I would have liked it. It'd been weird. I mean, a little weird. It's like that time when they NBC broadcast Schindler's List. And Ray finds uh, in his first scene, he says it's fucking cold out here. And I was like, man, that's weird. That's on NBC. You can't be saying the F word on NBC. But they did because it's a very important movie. Anyways, um, yeah, I thought it would have been cool. SmackDown, Naomi drops F-bomb. Didn't happen. She probably would have been fired if that happened. Anyways. Uh, well, I mean, they, ha- they, they could have you know, bleeped it out. Live. Yeah, but there's a seven second delay because sure about Apollo that? Cruz. Oh, oh yeah, what are we talking about? Naomi probably would have got a bigger push. Look at Apollo Cruz; he dropped the f bomb like twice, and they just pushed him. Yeah, <laughs> he says fuck all the time. He needs to watch that. Yeah, oh, that that's like one of the more interesting aspects of his character. He likes to drop the f bomb in impromptu, in in opportune situations. Yes. Anyways, anyways, um, uh, oh, so and as, we're gonna get to those things too. I loved oh those little promos, those little pro. There are some bad ones and some good ones. Yeah. So uh, as Naomi's leaving the ring, oh, um, she hands over her belt. Yeah, yeah, she hands over the belt to Daniel Bryan. <coughs> Alexa Bliss comes down, and more or less says, "Give me my belt back." I love her so much. She's, she's such a great deal. Yeah, she's wonderful. She even stumbled a little bit. She was like playing up the crowd and shit. It was great. She was good. So she was like Daniel Bryan. It's obvious you should give me the belt back. And I was cheering for that. I was like, she has a very good point here. She should get the title back. Well, I mean, she should be in a match to, to win it back. Mm, no, she should just, just be back. handed just to give her. Give it back to her. She's really good. Um, Daniel Bryan said, eh, eh. And Says we said, have a title match yeah, tonight. Tonight. Right now. Yeah. And here's your opponent. By the way, I just want to get this. I hope nobody misunderstands. I didn't do the... I didn't keep you from doing the intro this week or th- this episode because I didn't like your job yesterday. I thought you did a great job yesterday. Oh, thank you. We should incorporate you doing the intro more. Okay. Because there's going to come a time when I'm not going to be around. I might die. Mm. No, I'm just saying I might go on. If we stagger our vacations, yeah. then there's the possibility you're going to have to do the I intro. Understand. So if we get people more used to doing the intro, it's so like maybe from now on you could do SmackDown, I'll do Raw. Okay. And then you'll get to refine your intro. All right. You'll have your own. You can make it your own. Okay. 
But there's something to be said for uniformity when people press play on a going in raw that they know what to expect. Raw is the big moments they expect me. Just like W. Steve W. SmackDown, superior storytelling. Yeah. They expect you. Okay. There you go. Uniformity. Uniformity. And then in, for Dirt Sheet, we'll just have Gypsy barking a lot. That seems um, to happen regardless if we plan it or not. Well, that's what we'll get Cannon Grant for. Hey, it's the Dirt Sheet. <laughs> I love Cannon. Hey, he Snapchats me. Hey, Steve. I noticed that Duke Justice was on your show today. When's he going to get his meatloaf championship? Spilled water all over myself. Anyways, uh, let's see here. And I'll get a Snapchat because of I just said, because I just called out Cannon Grant. So after a commercial break, we had uh, Becky Lynch versus Alexa Bliss. Correct, Amundo. Fun match. Fast pace. Yeah, SmackDown has really, they, they, always, they always let their matches breathe. And they always, um, I'll be honest with you, dude. I'll be completely honest with you. And this is called this is called evolution. It's called developing. It's called changing and growing. Mm-hmm. I like the crane camera. I'm liking the cane camera. I'm the crane camera. When I say cane camera, mm-hmm. yeah, cane. it'd be funny if there was a cane camera. They had <laughs> cane out. cam. Yeah, that'd be good. They had him. Just they walk. put a GoPro. Yeah, just walking around the, the ringside area. <laughs> then he like mills about down in the. Yeah. Anyways, um, I, I don't mind it. I just don't like it as the primary camera. It's fine when you augment. I think they've been doing the a better job. They've they've done a better job of working it into yeah. into the direction of the show, so it's not as noticeable. Yeah, I I just feel I, I think it's this, dude. I have been associating SmackDown with honestly better wrestling matches. Yeah, because they do let the matches breathe. In general, the matches. I'm saying this in general. The matches take on. A big fight feel. Yeah. You know, on Raw, <clears throat> on Raw two nights ago, when Braun took on Big Show, it had a big fight yeah. feel. When Kevin Owens took on Seth Rollins. I feel like on SmackDown, they try to push the big fight feel more than on Raw. Yeah. Because they have like a Raw, smaller roster. Yeah, Raw reserves that that for their main events more Right, or less. exactly, yeah. With SmackDown, I mean, this was kind of a big moment. They're fighting for the, the women's title. I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, and it was a fun match. Uh, Alexa Bliss ended up becoming a two-time women's champion. Yeah, she... Uh, she jabbed her throat or something, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then, rolled, and then, her then her rolled her up. Got a handful of tights and got the win. Mm-hmm, yeah, so good for her. She's now a two-time women's champion. Um, sad for Naomi, but uh, the show must go on. Hopefully she's uh, not out with injury long. Right. Right. So maybe right, if right. she can come back by WrestleMania, because when she was handing over her title, she she said to Daniel Bryan that she had a feeling that if she hands over her title, that it was more or less handing over her spot at WrestleMania. Yeah, too. yeah, 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 yeah. But with WrestleMania being in her hometown, hopefully yeah. she has about a month, yeah. more than a month to get healthy. So hopefully she can and she can at the very reclaim least, her title. At the very least, she'll make a in her hometown at WrestleMania. She that should, would be awesome. She should cash in her money in the bank lunchbox. You know, we have the lunchbox that yeah, somebody gave us. She should cash it. that in. She comes down there, a little lunchbox. That's what the briefcase should be for now on a lunchbox. You all right there? I got water all over me. You got some shit all over you? Yeah, I noticed earlier you botching your water drinking there. You, like, tried to drink it, and you, like, forgot I'm that I'm like the going main character from Airplane. I have a drinking problem. <laughs> That's good. I got to watch that movie again. Um, then we had the first in a series of these. Okay, so... It was announced on Talking Smack last week there's going to be a 10-man tournament. No, Battle Royal. Battle, I'm sorry. Eh, tournament isn't fun wrestling. A Battle Royal to determine the number one contendership to go on to. And I, you know, I noticed it because you noticed it before. They keep on using that term main event mm-hmm. at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that means. I assume that means it's going to be the <coughs> main event of the show. Again, what does that mean, though? Technically, it's supposed to mean it goes on last. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, we had... Dean Ambrose. And so all the participants, sorry, let me interrupt you. Yeah. I, I don't remember if you touched on this yet. All the oh, participants right. in this battle royal got uh, some promo time. Mm-hmm. Um, they all seem like uh, pre-shot little uh, little promos to camera. Sorry, go ahead. Generally about 10, 15 seconds. Right, yeah, and they're great. They're amazing for good reasons and bad. Dean Ambrose, his was actually kind of like I didn't really pay attention. I mean, I did pay attention, but it, it was just standard Dean. It was yeah. fine. Yeah. It wasn't he like, I don't want to say in the bowels of the arena. It felt that way. It kind of felt that way. It was kind of like early shield. Um, Callisto, then they cut to a Callisto promo. His was fairly, it was kind of what you'd expect from Callisto. You know, he's talking about Lucha. The whole time I'm thinking, 
oh yeah, SmackDown doesn't have ten elite status guys, so they're tossing Callisto in here. But you know, by putting Callisto in there with Dolph with Apollo Cruz, they're developing stories mm-hmm. all in one match, which is yeah. something SmackDown's really good at is taking various narrative threads oh, yeah. on they, the show yeah, and, really and, and, and bring them together for one match. Yeah. And then we had the Miz doing Miz things. Oh, I like this one. But it was good. No, I thought this was I thought this was a strong promo. Um he he listed off his accomplishments, including his movie roles in various WWE yeah, studio that was funny. films. Which was pretty funny. Um, I like that one. There's a couple of silly ones after this. Um, American Alpha versus. You skipped the Natalia interview. Oh, yeah. I, this okay. I'll be honest. That was a fucking sick match they had. Yeah. That was a real. That was a really cool match. So I'm gonna forgive. Like I'm, but I at this point I was sort of just done like hearing them yap about each other. Yeah. Because. I still have no. What are they fucking fighting about again? What are um, they Natalia about? Uh, beat up Nikki at Survivor Series. Yeah, this is wrestling is what they should be doing. I don't know why this feud is still going. The Survivor Series was a long time ago. It was November. That was November. It was three months ago. Oh my goodness gracious! But there was about three or four weeks where there was the 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 mystery about who attacked Nikki. Yeah, that's true. So it took him a while to <laughs> solve did. that yeah. mystery. And I still never. Why did she? Is it because of John Cena? I think it was because kind of just jealousy. Carmella was because of John Cena. I don't know why Natalia was. Anyways, uh, so she gave an interview saying Natalia things, saying, yeah. And then uh, American Alpha took, oh, oh, I love, I love whenever they come from commercial, they come out of commercial, and who's milling about the ring? Who's fighting next, dude? Oh, uh, Breezango? Yeah. Come on, man. I can't do Vince. Oh. <laughs> You're fashion police. I can't do that right now. Do you? You know, I hope you. You know, I think you take me for granted sometimes. Can I just get this off my chest? I think you take me for granted sometimes. Why? Why do I take you for granted? Because yesterday I gave you everything in fun wrestling. Did you hear me shouting? Yeah, and it was great. Bacon driver. Yeah, it, over it and over again. It made for a great show. I feel like you don't appreciate me. No, enough. I did appreciate that very All much. Right, just making sure. I, I thought I said something to you yesterday as I was leaving. If I didn't, I'm, I apologize. I, I think you just grumpy. I think you just grumpily said, "Your voice can be crap tomorrow." No, I didn't say it grumbly. I'm joking. I'm joking. I probably said it. Uh, and well, everything you say is kind of grumbly. A little bit. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, I think I said that not uh, to to be grumpy, but yeah. it's like kind of is my it's kind of a way of saying thank you. Oh, it's like okay. you put so, right. so much into it. It's I like, should know that by now. I should yeah. know that by now. No, I'm joking. I felt appreciated. Um. Anyways, Brizango, uh, was milling about the fashion police. Oh, they're fashion police. They were milling about the fashion room. police. We'll have, to do this, we'll have to do something where you do mellow Vince. Yeah, I know. I'll just have to know when to segue into exactly. loud Vince. Um, oh, bring Zango's on. Yeah, I can't do it. Anyways, American Alpha show up. <coughs> we know how this is going to go down. Um, they end up beating Brizango, of course. Yeah. And then the Usos show up in the crowd. I like that. The, I love that the Usos are back to doing good heel yeah, work. And I thought this promo was great. Here's my only problem with it. I tweeted this out at Real Going In Raw. I think this would have been much more effective. So you got the Usos in the crowd, and they cut back to American Alpha, who are just like saying, yeah, come on, come on, come on. I would have loved this so much more if the Usos did what they did at that at Elimination Chamber. They can't, They come in, sneak attack American Alpha, they lay them to waste, and then they do this. Because doing it from the crowd kind of just makes it sound like they're barking with no bite. I think the Usos need to show a little bit of bite like they did at Elimination well, Chamber. maybe in the lead-up to their eventual match at WrestleMania, they will do that. This was just kind of the the opening shot mm-hmm. in them doing, as you just I said. Think, I think there's no reason for them not to be fucking with them physically right oh, now. Oh, I'm sure they will. They're still... Just to jack with them. They're still and a then, month until Mania. And then lay down this promo. That's That would be my critique as producer of the segment. Okay. Who do you think produced the segment? Are the same the same producers on Raw or on SmackDown? I don't think so, but I'm not sure. I'm going to say this was Adam Pierce. Okay, is he on SmackDown? I don't know. Is he producer on yes, SmackDown. Yes, I think so. I okay, think he is. I say it's Adam Pierce. Okay. Adam Pierce. We need to beat down first, and then we then you do the promo. But the promo itself was fantastic. Oh, I loved it. I thought it, it was, was great. really I good. Like they've got those. They had like the hoodies on. Yeah, they look. They're very energetic now. I like that. I don't like when they mill about. I don't like milling about. They dude. seem like they're they're inspired to do good work. Yeah, well, they're probably saying, "Hey, you guys have a match at in the Mania pre-show, so go out and make this count." Yeah. Um, we had more promos. 
uh, AJ was just walking through the backstage area, mm -hmm. really excited about an opportunity to, to earn his spot in the main event of WrestleMania. Oh, that's right. There was that like writer or producer guy just standing there. And what did he? What did AJ say again? I forget what he said. Yeah, I do too. He just sort of yelled at him or something, and the guy like looked stunned. Um, that was good. This was the only. This one felt different than the rest because it. This one felt like it obviously wasn't kind of pre-produced. You know? Yeah, I know. They're like, oh, which one did we miss? They're like, there's ten guys here. We only have nine segments. Well, they had eight because Cena didn't have one. Oh, that's right. What the hell, fucking Cena? They should have just run like his Nickelodeon or his uh, Kids Choice Awards thing. Um, Next, we had Dolph. This was my favorite. This was so fucking bad. It was. This was so hilarious. Like, no, it. So you, you, he has like the Dolph Ziggler logo behind him. This and, is on a green screen, which, which harkened back to the '80s when they <laughs> yeah. do promos like this. Yeah, and like they didn't, you know. There's, 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 there's the correct way to light for green screen, and then there's the Dolph Ziggler way to light for green screen, and this it looked sh like shit. Like they lit him for shit against that green screen. It looks so bad. Yeah. And then he super kicked his own logo. Like he super kicked, I think, the green screen sheet behind him. But it fell as if it was a solid piece. Yeah. So I think he kicked. They had a plate behind him. I think that he kicked the plate. And then the plate, not like a real plate, but like, you know, a, a digital plate. Right. Yeah. They yeah. Put yeah. In yeah. Three yeah. plates of green screen. So he <coughs> kicked the plate that fell. And what was behind him was still green screen. <laughs> But just a green, but okay, a still see, of the backstage. That's area. what I thought. But I thought my eyes were like deceiving me a little bit. I was like, wait a second. Is he actually, did he just kick like the, did they have like a green screen, like a, a hard green screen wall behind him that he kicked and it fell down? No, I don't think so. I don't think that's what happened because, because that wouldn't it, have made any sense. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have fallen it like it was falling. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right. So okay. I think it was because because it didn't fall like forward or backwards. It just fell straight down as to, if it were a sheet, but yeah. it, it didn't have any drape yeah. or wrinkles in it like yeah, a sheet would exactly, when it fell. Yeah. Well, I thought it might have been a hard thing, but it's not even that. It's when it fell, they, like the perspective, like the thing wouldn't have gone with it. Like the image they were putting on yeah. there wouldn't have gone with it. It just would have been static still against the whatever green yeah. was falling. But also, I mean, like when he kicked it, it fell straight down. Yeah, oh, it didn't yeah, fall yeah, forward yeah, yeah, or, okay. or backwards yeah, yeah, at all, or to right. the side. It just went straight down. Yeah, and then like I was like, yeah, he still looks like he's green screen, but he's not, right? No, like was, I didn't it was, know it was a green screen. Shot, he was I still think. green. Screen. I think it was. I, whoever produced that, never do that again. Yeah. Never, never give that. Never intro. Never. Never let that person do green screen again. That was horrible. It was not I don't even good, understand. Why did he kick his own good, name? It was not a good bit. Why did he super kick his own name? I don't name? know. I don't get it. I don't get it either. Is he going to debut a new logo, a new name, a new persona? What is he going to do? That'd be cool if he, if he did. Like a new name yeah. or a new logo? Both. What would his new Complete name be? Complete repackage. What would his new name be? Mean Dolph. <laughs> no. It'd have to be... Um, Hold on, I can get this. Oh, well, obviously, it'd be the Colonel. Oh. <laughs> it'd be the Kentucky Fried Chicken Colonel. What's his character's name in Countdown? <clears throat> oh, there you go. That's who it would be. That's yeah, what it would be. I have no idea. I have no idea either. All right, then we had a Mojo Raleigh promo. I actually like this one okay. It was just him backstage. Yeah, it was him being intense. It was him being intense. I like him. He's good. Um, Luke Harper's promo was good. I love Luke Harper. He's fantastic. I freaking love Luke Harper. Uh, Nikki gave interview which, again, I didn't really care about. However, I will say this. About 10 minutes in this Nikki Natalia match, I was, like, all the way into it. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit, this is cool. And I love the ending. So it, this is a fucking Texas death match right here. This is a hardcore fucking ma match. Falls like, count anywhere match. This is like Funk versus Foley back in the Almost. day. Yeah, this is there. Um, so, yeah, falls count anywhere. It's W. Steve W. territory. So they were going all throughout the arena, just beating the living shit out of each other. This is a great spot where uh, Nikki launches Natalia into a mirror and it shatters yeah. everywhere. It yeah. was fantastic. It was really good. Um, at one point, Natalia throws Nikki, uh, and Maurice is milling about, again, milling about. Yeah. And uh, Nikki launches into, into Maurice, and Maurice falls down. Yeah. And then uh, the, it spills back onto the ramp, closer to the ring. Maurice... Out well, of nowhere. Well, well Marie, or, sorry. Uh, Natalia is trying to get Nikki in the sharpshooter. Nikki reverses it to the, what do they call fearless it? Fearless lock. Lo yeah. I think that's what they call it. Fear lock or something like that. Fearless lock. And, and Maurice comes running out from the backstage area with a 
pipe. I was look, dude. I was just hoping. I wanted to see. I was like, you know what? This reminds me of W. Steve W. Am I going to get an unprotected baseball bat shot? And Maurice came out and said, gave us an unprotected lead pipe shot. Wasn't to the head. No, but it was still unprotected. wasn't Wasn't a pipe either. It wasn't. What was it? What do you think it was? I don't know. They said Morrow said it was a pipe. I understand. JBL that. said it was a pipe. It wasn't a pipe. Why do you think it wasn't a pipe? It wasn't pipe? a real pipe. Both guys said it was a pipe. It wasn't a real pipe. Where do you get your info from? Did the um, new wrestling observer come out and tell you it wasn't no, a pipe? No, but just like she was carrying that implement as if it didn't really have much weight to it. <laughs> well, it could be like a really, really light lead An aluminum, pipe. aluminum pipe? Yeah, aluminum, a foil, metal. aluminum foil pipe. Yeah, that it, it, was, it was lead, lead plating. I don't know. I'm sure there was a little bit of lead in there. No, I don't think there's any lead think in there. So? Zero lead. It was like a a, a, a a wrapping paper tube with like silver spray paint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways. Any, anyways. It was I, still, the match was good. Yeah. Um, and it was all Maurice coming out, or Maurice getting knocked over, then coming out to interfere. It was all to further the story of the match. It seems like we're definitely getting at WrestleMania between The Miz and Maurice versus John Cena and Nikki Bella. Yeah, because we saw some more of that shit in the main event. Yes. Um, anyways, after that terrific match. Baron Corbin promo. And he, he punctuated it by saying, because Baron Corbin. Did you get that? Mm-hmm. Was that? Was that right? Yeah, something like that. What does that mean? I'm going to win this because of Baron Corbin. Well, I was like, is that a play on words? Is Corbin is like Corbin some sort of verb that I'm not aware of? Let's think of some uh, adjectives we could use to describe Baron Corbin and see if we can find out what he's trying to say. Tall. Apathetic. Slow. Um, he's not that slow, though. Balding. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, meandering. Mm-hmm. Milling, mm-hmm. he's a mill. I mean, that's a verb. Anyways, um, yeah, to mill is a is a verb. Yes, <laughs> I saw your eyes shut. Like whenever you have to think about some idiot thing that I say, your eyes always up. go up, and you yeah. say, "Wait, is he right? No, he's not." Um, yeah, no, he's because Baron Corbin. I'm like, is that so? I know. Like, was there, is there more to that? No, what that he, was. What did Baron Corbin was, do? That was a period. Because what? At the end of that <coughs> statement, this next one my favorite. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. It's Paul Cruz. Yes. Right? Cameraman's on him like this, right? And he's doing resistance bands, which are great. You know, he's doing this. And then he lets go of them. For some reason, the cameraman wanted to follow the resistance band down and then went back up. <laughs> and as he's going back up, Paulo Cruz is trying to get rid of one of the resistance bands off his feet. And it's very subtle, but it completely took me. I don't fucking know what he said after that. I was just cracking up because the cameraman cared more about the resistance band and it being on his foot, which was apropos because then Apollo Cruz tries to kick it off his foot. I love it. It's like if you're laying in bed and you're like too warm, so you just want to get down to your skivvies and you get like pajama bottoms on. And instead of standing up and doing it, like oh, you go yeah, down, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. laying there, you go down as far as you can, and then you have to do this shit, yeah, like yeah, with your yeah. feet yeah. and your knees, and just try to. And then you kick them off. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. I loved it. It was great. It's very apropos of Apollo Crews. Awkward, normal, nice guy. That's Apollo Crews, who's built like a stud. He, uh-huh. did, he did a decent job with his promo, showed some intensity. Um, it's hard to show intensity when you're trying to kick a resistance band off your foot. I'm sure that might have been a distraction. I really wish, this is my sincere wish, I really wish it wouldn't have worked. He still delivered his promo, and as he walks away, the cameraman tracks him, and he's got the resistance band still stuck to him. He's like, it's like toilet paper. Yeah. I mean, great. Anyways. Next, we had a, a Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton promo. <laughs> Very short. Yeah. To the point. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Bray reiterated, heir of the Wyatts. Yeah. Told, said to Randy something about having the that Randy now has the keys to the kingdom. I yeah. wonder if that meant that that uh, Randy is now fully a part of the Wyatts. Like there was a Wyatt family probationary period. Oh sure, yeah. But then now after he's won the Rumble yeah. and given up yeah. his spot to face Bray at Mania, yeah. that Bray says, "Okay, I embrace you fully now." Yeah. Randy, you, you have access to the the entirety of the powers I can bestow upon you. So he passed his written exam. He just he had to pass his driver test, and which he did now, <laughs> and he did. So he has his he has his Wyatt family uh, benefits. Benefits. I guess, yes. What do you think the benefits are? The full benefits of being a Wyatt member are. 
I obviously teleportation. Teleportation. Is a big maybe one. now remember that, that time where Randy seemed like he was trying to shoot lasers from his eyes? <laughs> it didn't quite work, but maybe now, now he can do that. Maybe now he can, he'll learn how to do that. <laughs> now. Maybe now he'll get some ratty ass clothes. He has access to to the, the to the Wyatt family wardrobe locker. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or their um uh Seamstress. Seamstress, thank you for the word. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm looking for it. I hope we get like a you know an explanation on that one. As do I. He made, do you think he has to meet Sister Abigail? I don't know. Depends if Sister Abigail is a real person or not. Yeah, which is up for debate. <sighs> then we had the ten man battle royal. Yeah, they gave this a good amount of time, about 25 minutes. This is like 30 minutes, dude. This is yeah, I, mean, I know having it on here, but I remember looking at my shit and it was like 6:26. Yeah, that's when they started. That's when Cena came out. Look at my dog did to my arm. Today. I was wondering what happened there. Oh yeah, I don't know if you guys can see this. Vicious animal. No, she's a sweetheart. I love her so much. She just needs to get her energy out. She plays. She likes to play, so we play rough. Anyway, <clears throat> battle royal happened. Um, let's run down these eliminations. I'm glad you had them all here. Yeah. Again, uh, they were telling some really good little stories. Yeah, like, here. like I said earlier, they they take a lot of different narrative threads, manage to put them all together in one match, and develop stories. I'm looking forward. And I'm looking forward to the next couple of weeks on SmackDown to see what they do with Baron Dean. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, I think it's going to be cool. I think <clears throat> Dean is the kind of guy who who can be very creative, mm-hmm. and I'm hoping that Baron is the kind of guy who will follow his lead. Yeah, and, and hopefully gain some knowledge and exactly, inspiration. Anyways. So uh, Corbin <coughs> first eliminates Mojo. Wah, wah. That sucks. Yeah, and then. Uh, Dolph eliminated Kalisto. Mm, yes. And quickly thereafter, Apollo Crews eliminated Dolph. Yeah, that's right. All developing the story going on between those three. Mm-hmm. Um, then very quickly after that, Baron Corbin eliminates Apollo Crews. Man, it feels like forever ago when Baron Corbin was... Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews were locked in a fierce feud to determine who the going official going in Ron wrestler was. I know. Ended up being Baron Corbin. Yes. Um, and then Cena eliminated The Miz. Setting up their match at WrestleMania. Although The Miz did not leave the ringside area, as we will see in a little bit. Um, Dean Ambrose eliminated Baron Corbin. In a sneaky, sneaky manner. And in a similarly sneaky manner, The Miz eliminated John Cena. Okay. At that point, the ref should have been like, no, Cena, you're good. Get back in here. No, that's not that's not the rules. Why? The battle Royals, no DQ. If you go to the top rope, you're done. Why would anybody leave? Why would I know. Any, why would anybody be once they're eliminated? Why would anybody leave? I know that I agree with. Make a sense? Doesn't make any sense. Maybe Miz is the only person who sort of figured that out. No, it's, it's happened before. Has it? Yeah. Well, maybe I'm just saying, like in this one, but you know how people sometimes are. You know how like sometimes in football, the coaches forget certain rules. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe this is this. You know, most people just forgot in this particular battle royal. They just forgot. Miz didn't. Could be. Yeah. Anyways, Miz eliminates Cena. It was stupid. Yeah. Um, Harper uh, then eliminates Ambrose. Oh, because it ended up being, yeah, Harper, Ambrose, and AJ all sort of going at it. And they it. were on the outside of the apron, and then uh, AJ kind of had a hold of Ambrose, and mm-hmm. Harper kicked him in the gut. Right. And Ambrose just kind of fell. Yeah, like, I think the camera angle didn't didn't uh, benefit that particular spot. Yeah, it like kind of awkward. Instant diarrhea. Yeah. So, so that, left, like that. that left Luke Harper and AJ Styles as right. the last two. Right. And as I said last week, or last week, I think, yeah, when they announced this, following this announcement of the 10-man battle royal, I said on Dirt Sheet, I said it's either going to be Harper winning or it's going to be AJ winning. Those yeah. are the only two viable options. So Let me ask you something. Because I figured it would have been Harper. Why, why, why would you have thought AJ? Because then Randy <coughs> could reassert his, his claim for that title shot. So to you know say, okay, no, I'm gonna, I want to get back in that match to guarantee that Bray retains the title. Mm-hmm. Because they may be able to say, okay, let's go in the main event. And Did you think they were thinking down. of a triple threat match at Mania? It could be. But yeah. I was thinking they'd have Daniel Bryan would say, okay, well, if you want that right back, Randy, that you earned at the Rumble and then gave up, you have to fight AJ Styles at Mania. Whoever wins that match faces Bray oh, in the yeah. main event. That would have been good. But <clears throat> as I alluded to earlier, touched on earlier, it seemed like either they didn't, Harper and Styles didn't exactly know how they wanted to execute the last spot in the match. Right. Or they just didn't really have much chemistry in the ring together at that moment. I think they had a plan. I think that plan fell apart and then they had to improvise. That's my general sort of feeling because you got to think it's like, man, all we have to do is tumble out of this together and hit our feet at the same time. 
and we're having a hard time doing that. Yeah. You know, and so it probably didn't go to plan. They probably had to do it on the fly. So they didn't like replicate exactly what they had just done. Yeah. Um, but they ended up being a spot where AJ was kind of over the 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 turnbuckle on the outside of the ring, and Harper was on the apron, mm-hmm. and Harper kind of suplexed him off. Yeah. Kind of. But it was plainly obvious that AJ hit first. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. His, His feet, body hit first. <coughs> His feet like. Phew. Like yeah, went down and then really quick. and then Harper had to kind of slide off the apron mm-hmm. as AJ fell to the kind only, of make it seem like they touched the only the ground ambiguity, roughly at the same time. The only ambiguity was the only angle that I saw or the angle that they showed because they weren't going to show more angles. Oh, I know it, it didn't show anybody's feet. Look, it was completely obvious that AJ hit first, but as soon as you look back to Luke Harper, the foot that does touch first is kind of obscured like the view is obscured both feet need to touch two feet oh was that the thing that yeah. was the rule yeah. oh yeah that's right okay so wow. i guess in theory if aj fell first but his feet never touched the ground yeah before harper's feet touched the ground i'll, I'll say this though <clears throat> i mean if they had done a better job of explaining you know we're not going to go to instant replay we're not going to go to the tape yeah. this has to be in the ref's hand but like WWE has gone to WWE has gone to instant replay. They've gone to the tape so many times. Yeah. But then also sometimes they ignore it. So I know in, in, in places where you think it'd be obvious that okay, yeah. let's, let's look at the tape and then we can work this all out. They just don't do it. I think they probably just should have done a better job with the cameraman, like being in a better spot so that you couldn't see exactly that AJ's feet hit first. Well, as I said, in the angle they showed, you didn't see anybody's feet hit the ground. It was just obvious that AJ hit landed yeah. well, on you know, the outside when of the his ring. His legs first. stopped moving. You know exactly. Like it was plainly obvious. Yeah, that AJ fell. Yeah, probably more based on the angles and and the order of people falling. That AJ hit the ground before Harper did. I yeah. know. Yeah. We don't see anybody's feet hit the ground, so there's that. Because it was also unanimous on Twitter. Everybody started saying, "Oh no, dude, AJ." Hit well, then AJ. Daniel Bryan uh, touched on that in Talking Smack. Oh, what did he, he say? said? Because uh, AJ was getting on about, "Hey, let's let's." Let's work this out now. Mm-hmm. So we have, you know, we know who the number one contender is right now because AJ says, I want to know. I want to get this worked out now. Yeah. And then Daniel Bryan said, Well, if I had to decide who won the match right now, it would be Luke Harper. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. So. Interesting. Uh, so, but Daniel Bryan at the end of SmackDown <laughs> announced that, uh, that while no winner was announced last night, yeah. that a, a new number one contender will be decided next week on SmackDown. So yeah. They were running out of time on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was good. It was <coughs> it was a fun SmackDown. I think I'm just used to SmackDown having more definitive results. Like SmackDown is usually like a really, really good. I know. And so like when they when they throw us a cliffhanger like this, it's like, oh man, what the hell? I want like no, no, no. Um, but I should be okay with it. Like it's fine. It's it's good. Well, it's we get we get AJ Styles versus Luke Harper probably next week. I know, man. I just I would really love I would really love for them to go through with the rumored Wyatt family match Harper Orton Wyatt I really want to see that yeah. like that that could be like a total star making performance for Luke Harper yes. like he has benefited so much by the the crowd sport. was behind Luke Harper last night too well that was kind of also my my beef with um the the finish <coughs> is that no matter who wins people are going to be disappointed by the loser yeah because people love aj and they love luke yeah and they want both these guys to win so i was like man i wish this could have been a finish where you saw like harper versus baron or something like that because baron or maybe even the miss but i think baron would have been better number one i think people would mark out if you see luke harper facing off against baron corbin they're both big guys yeah and uh people really like luke and they really want to hate baron and so if they were going to do a thing where Harper won clean, I would have loved to have seen him eliminate mm-hmm. Baron Corbin. But like you said, we get to see Luke Harper versus AJ Styles next week. Who doesn't want to see that? Um, It'd be interesting to see if the, <clears throat> the Wyatts interfere in that match and on whose behalf. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's how it actually ended, too, was the Wyatts, like up on the big screen. Oh, yeah, my, my, I DVR'd it and it cut out before. Bray just started laughing and that was it. Bray started laughing and instead of like fading to black or something, it like did this awkward like cut with some digital noise, like just a, like a speck of it. So it was like awkward because it went straight into, and now it's the season premiere of Crisley Knows Best. <laughs> it's like, no, you need to fade to black 
let's get like a final WWE logo on there so that the drama of the moment isn't interrupted by Jackass and his family and their stupid season premiere. I love Grizzly. I think he's hilarious. But he is a jackass, and his family is a bunch of jackasses, too. Um, so, anyways, that's how you improve your show. Yeah. 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 You add the drama there. Anyways. Uh, yeah, SmackDown. Fun show. Yeah, fun show. I'm going to open some stuff. Let's open some stuff. We got a bunch of packages, man. I will take this one. I will take the next one. I'm going to bring up the questions before I do that. While you open that, I'm going to bring I up. I think you... What did I do? You... Uh, Wrote over the name here. Zach. Zach. Schultz. Okay. Zach Schultz, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Zach Schultz. Uh-oh, I dropped the letter. Oh, no. Darn it. Oh, look at this. What do we get? Oh, look at Oh, from TNA. Oh, that's the... Ooh, right there. there's the money right there. Signed by Kurt Angle. That's awesome. <coughs> That's good. Very good. I love it. Ric we Flair. Got a signed Ric Flair. That's awesome. You need to show the other side. And then. I'm the man. That's cool. Why well, you got to do that? I'm the man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm working with a. I'm working at 50% here. Hold on a second. All right. This one is coming to us from Jacob Landon. Thank you, Jacob. I will read this note. Dear Stephen Larson, about five years back, I went to a TNA event and was lucky enough to get into a pre-show meet and greet. Ever since then, these have just been sitting in my basement, so I figured you guys can make better use of them than I could. Thank you for the hours of entertainment, thoughtful insight, and refueling my love of wrestling. Your friendo, Zach. Thank you very much, Zach. That was awesome. We'll get these framed, and we'll put them up on the uh, newsplex wall. Yeah. Uh, this is from Jake. I've been along to... Hello, friendos. Been a long time viewer and fan of all your guys' content on the internet. I remember 10 for the Win was the first regularly uploaded YouTube series I watched over the years. And to this day, I've seen every episode. That's a lot of 10 wow. for the Win. I enjoy watching the stuff on Machinima, but half of the reason I watched to see how you guys would be involved with their show that day. It was especially hilarious watching you guys struggle through the creepy text theater videos. However, when I got back into wrestling three years ago, I was always really busy and didn't always have time to watch. So I'd always be checking results on the pro wrestling websites, and I always wish there was better content for me to enjoy. After searching you guys on YouTube about a year ago, I found the podcast and I became hooked. I really love how it is daily content. I always have something to listen to at work. Another thing that is great about you too is you're very good at critiquing wrestling without being too overly negative, unless it's TJ Perkins, Steve. But I agree with you on that. I really enjoy watching the channel and the brand grow. I wish you guys best of luck and hope you enjoy these two shirts to wear to the New Japan shows oh, in California wow. this summer. Beards for the win, Larson, and too sweet for Steve. Awesome. What do we got here? Oh, look at oh, that. Oh, look at that. Oh, man. That's so cool. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Jake. Here, this is the XL. Look thank you it's so like much. Fancy, it's like it the is. fancy a nice one, too, thank with you the so much. sleeve here. The Game Over logo. That's awesome. Great. Thank you thank so you, much. man. That's really nice of you, Jake. Appreciate it. If you want to send us some cool shit, you can. The address is in the description below. You can send it to P.O. Box 1814, Orangevale, California, 95662. That's fantastic. Thank you so Thank much, you guys. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you, it. Zach. Thank you, Jake. All right. We're going to answer some questions right now. Generally, we choose from a dollar up on the Patreon. Correct. Uh, we have question threads and a uh, dollar up a month. King of Hostile, Joshua, the dynamic Knight Martinez. Hey, friendos. So I was just listening to Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez talk about how the you deserve it chants are stupid. Do you agree? I would assume that there was some amount of um, nuance with them calling it stupid because I'm sure that I'll just give you my opinion. In certain circumstances, they are fitting. Yes. In certain other circumstances, they probably aren't. Yeah. Generally speaking, chants are completely overdone. Yes. But in the end, it's a wrestling show, and if the crowd wants to be involved, then they'll find a reason to chant. God bless them for that. Yes. Because they're trying to have a good time. Yes. So <clears throat> I don't know. I think it's funny because I think to us, I know for us, we're enmeshed in the wrestling world, you know, like in terms of like we watch a lot of it, 
And so it's it's easier, I think, for us, and I would imagine people like Meltzer and Alvarez to be a bit more jaded about the fan experience. They paid their ticket. Just let them fucking do what they want to do as long as they're not trying to take over as the show. As long as they're not being disrespectful to the people in the ring. The you deserve it shit. Busting their ass. The you deserve it shit is like... It's like showing appreciation for somebody you like. I know. There's not really a lot of downside to that. I'm I'm not huge on the what chance, and unless you're chanting it at the McMahons, I'm not huge on the CM Punk chance. Yeah. I think it's hilarious when they chant it at the McMahons because they usually either have a comeback or it's like, hey, you know, it's kind of like chanting you fucked up because mm-hmm, I like mm-hmm, CM Punk. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I I don't like when they chant CM Punk during like other wrestlers' oh, matches. Uh, yeah. It, I hate I hate anything that, that that detracts from what. The participants in the ring are trying to do chanting while what? they're wrestling. Chanting what is annoying? I know. I, um, I, I'm just not into that. Yeah, me neither. But I don't know. Do you deserve a chance? I don't know. I think they're funny. I like that's what I like about the PWG show is that they would chant certain things at just hilariously appropriate times. You know, when it was kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Haven Elric. What are the chances of the next game being SmackDown versus Raw 2K18 this fall instead of the regular WWE 2K18? Interesting question. So it's going to be one of two things. That is a very distinct possibility, or it's going to be yeah this guy in the cover. Yep. Um, I think that uh, there will almost definitely be a Raw versus SmackDown mode. I would think so. You would think so, right? Yeah, I would think so. The but pro- then, of course, the only catch to that is the redraft is going to be probably during the final stages of development I of the they'll game. Have, they'll have uh, something where you can draft <coughs> your own brand rosters. That could be. Uh, the perfect Haas's manager, Ice King. Okay, I think that we all agree that Fandango and Tyler Breeze are actually pretty good. They are. Obviously not when they're fashion police. <laughs> that was fashion good. police. That was good. What are your guys' thoughts on them keeping the stupid gimmick but changing it a little bit to something kind of dark and they start winning, destroying other teams, but they still go around giving tickets and beatdowns to anyone? Well, I guess you can. you could potentially transition them to you remember when Cody Rhodes would give uh, audience members bags to put over their heads because he was handsome or dashing Cody Rhodes Um, I guess they could transition into something kind of like that where they're still able to give tickets but they're still kind of taken seriously yeah Um, it's possible it's happened before I think these guys are both very very talented oh yeah I personally would be sad because I am a big fan of Smackdown tag teams milling about and being cartoony gimmicks Fashion police. Exactly. Who doesn't love fashion police? Man, that's going to ruin my voice. We keep doing that. James Rodriguez, what is the best and worst theme change for a superstar that once had an iconic theme? Oh, man. When they introduced uh, Slipknot into Steve Austin's. Wasn't it Slipknot? I think it was Slipknot. Something like that. It was like new metal. Introduced that into Austin's heel theme, and they went back to it. They went back to the old one eventually. Yeah. Um, Let's see here. <clears throat> Hogan came out to Voodoo Child. He used that at, at times 19. at WCW too. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, I loved that. Was I freaking loved it? It was great because he would sing along with it. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. I'm trying to think of some 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 other ones. You know whose theme song I always hated? Hmm. Christians. Which one? He had so many. Well, the la- I think it was like the last one. It sounded like an Evanescence song. Oh, okay. And I just don't. That one where the, the, I guess the choir goes, Christian! No, that's funny. It was great when yeah. he was uh, Captain Charisma. Yeah, that's good. I'm, I'm happy with that one. That was one. fantastic. Um, it always cracked me up, too, whenever, like, so, for example, Hogan, again, in TNA, his theme song was Not Quite. Which one was it? Was it Not Quite NWA? Yeah, it was Not Quite NWO. Like they tweet, yeah. they, they really took their lessons from WCW. Yes. Who would like, you know, alter uh, for DDP, for example. They would, they would like reverse two chords or something. <laughs> exactly. So it wasn't just like smells like teen spirit. Exactly. <clears throat> Matthew W. Stewart the second. At this point, would a heel Roman even get over with fans? I could see this being a better option for Cena at this point. If the WWE, if, if it happened with Cena, it would be more like, okay, we've seen... We've seen it all. Mm-hmm. This is something that people are kind of excited for. And it's, wow, that's really crazy they did that. With Roman, it would be acknowledgement of failure. Pretty much. But also, I think from, from a certain portion of audience, the audience, you'd be like, well, it's about time. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't be so much that as they're excited about it. Right. It's like, why didn't you do this eight yeah. months ago? Yeah, but it would also be validation. Yeah. With Cena, it would be, 
an evolution of the character. Exactly. And it would be like, oh, my God. It, at this point, it would be Hogan turning in, uh, going to the NWO. Pretty much. Empire of Filth Ambassador Jason the Cabbie. The most mellow friendo. Hey, friendos and friendo people alike. <laughs> so now we come to a conclusion on the Nikki and Natalia's forced storyline beginning the force feud with Maurice. Oh, goodness, Jason. I feel as though any feud involving Nikki Bella is an example of why things involving the f- female competitors in the 1995 to 2008 range was generally terrible. Just based on pure speculation, is this because they have truly no other idea how to write her or are they, to steal a phrase from King Ross, too busy blotting off into their own faces to write her a different way? Good day, sirs. Blotting off a British euphemism for ejaculating? I don't know. We could look it up. We could. Blotting off into their own faces. Um, Did you see that picture? Somebody tweeted, uh, one of our friendos tweeted at us where he ran into fucking Regal. Oh, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. At, at a the grocery Kroger. store. Yeah. Yeah, and he had milk, and he had a lot of chicken and a lot of milk. He had like a gallon of milk and a whole thing of chicken. Huh. It was great. Hello. I'm here for milk um, and chicken. Part of me wonders if they try to tie in somewhat Nikki's storylines to everything that's going on on Total Divas and Total Bellas. Cause mm. I know with the, the, the Natalia feud, Total Divas has been brought up a couple times. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just so there's, you know, synergy, synergy across mm-hmm. various properties. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right about that. Um, yeah, I think you're right about that. And I think I don't know. I think they've written her about as well as she can be written. You know what I mean? I don't have any beef with it because there's not a lot to work with in the first place. So, I mean, they're doing what they can. Yeah, you know. So, I don't know. I mean, like, we're not going to see a whole lot of her coming up anyway. Like, you know, if she if doesn't factor tired. Believed, yeah. yeah. So, you know, the, the women's division moves on. And I'll say this for Nikki. Ever, I don't know, the last two months, mm-hmm. at least the last month, every match, she's given it her all. Oh, man, I've liked a couple of her matches. Yeah, yeah for sure. Absolutely. Uh, Ivan, the clock. Oh, 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 man, I can't even do Moro. The clock cleaner, Rodriguez. With AJ being so over, I would argue Cena level at this point. Why is the main reason management still not all in on him as the face of the company? I kind of think that they actually are. I think that they feel a Shane McMahon feud is a, a top level feud. Yeah. I get that impression. I mean, Shane fought Undertaker last I year. Know. Undertaker is the special attraction. I know. Um, and so I do kind of feel that way. And I think that we're going to see. I think that we're all going to be very, very happy after WrestleMania with AJ Styles, with the direction they take him. I hope so. All evidence seems to to indicate that Vince is huge on AJ Styles. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to believe that anybody in the company wouldn't be huge on AJ Styles. I just think that they feel differently than we do in that they think that Shane is a big big feud. A draw, I know. Yeah, it's a big draw. I mean, you know, uh, it's been a while that AJ has been getting... Massive pops, mm-hmm. huge chance mm-hmm. when he comes out, and they're only going to grow. Mm-hmm. And you kind of have to wait till that's at its peak, yeah, to do the face turn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How about Shinsuke on Twitter, or no, that. in the interview rather? Yeah, then AJ responding on Twitter. Yeah, that'd be great. El Ingobernable de Tejas out of mayhem. Hey, friendos. First of all, Charlotte's pay-per-view streak is only winning singles matches, not not losing. Yeah, I think we mentioned that. It's championship matches that she's won consecutive 15 or so. Um, now the question. Let's say we recreate the Attitude Era big players, some storylines and rivalries and characters with current superstars. Who would do which role? Right, so I guess the question is like, who is today's Stone Cold? Correct. Who is today's Stone Cold? Um... Joshua Martinez mentions Dean. Uh, he doesn't have Stone Cold's intensity. He doesn't. I don't even, he doesn't have his charisma. <coughs> Seth Rollins. Uh, Seth Rollins is more like today's Triple H. I yeah. Think. Seth is today's Triple H because Seth can't really be a good face and neither could Triple H. Um, uh, who is today's? Who's today's Mick Foley? I'd say I would say Dean's probably today's McFoley. Yeah, he's closer I would probably to, give he's closer yeah. to Foley than yeah. Stone Cold. 
Um, I guess Bray would be today's Undertaker. Oh God, yeah, that's yeah, definitely. I would. I mean, honestly, I'd kind of give. Who's who is today? Who is the Attitude Era's Cena? Rock. In a couple respects, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, I mean, Stone Cold is hard to pin down, though. Well, look, if CM Punk was still around, it'd be CM Punk. Oh yeah, that much is fucking like clear as day. And there hasn't been really another CM Punk. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, those are good. Uh, the Empire, who's who's the Attitude Era, is the, who's today's Chris Jericho? Chris Jericho. Very good answer. Uh, the Empire of Filth official butthole inspector, Lewis Roberts. Ew, Lewis, it's gross. WWE have already done a series of tournaments recently, the CWC and UK. What do you think they'll do next? Um, well, like you, you stay here, the uh, women's tournament Correct. Is, has been rumored. Yeah. I, it wouldn't surprise me if they went to Japan as well. Yeah. That'd be really interesting. It'd be really interesting to see who would sort of cross lines to oh, do I know. in Japan. Uh, Lunatic Fridge. Alexa is getting a ton of heat, and I'm not sure it's just from non-smarks or it includes smarks too. Do you think her having the belt instead of Naomi might be planned to get Alexa some real heel heat? Nah, that's just because Naomi got legit hurt. If they wanted to get, if they wanted, no. They, they could have executed that in a different manner to get Alexa real heel yes. heat. Um, um, oh, yeah, that's that's the question. <laughs> I was yeah, going to comment on on his first line here. I'm not sure if it's just from non smarks or includes smarks too. Um, I would probably boo her as part of the show. Yeah. Because it would be validation for her doing a good job. But, but you she doesn't have, she doesn't have real work. hill heat with me. No, I, I just, I freaking, I love her. Yeah. She's fantastic. Um, uh, Mark to Mark. When Ro, when Rowan comes back, when Eric Rowan comes back, do you see him being on Luke or Bray's side? That is an interesting question. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder if they're gonna. I hope that they bring him back and give him some like form of conflict and like. I still wouldn't be surprised if he is on Luke's side and Luke is on Randy Orton's side at the end of WrestleMania. Yeah, well, we'll see. That's what I'm hoping for. Penultimate Tommy Wiseau. Given yesterday's internet issues, what would the going in raw technical difficulties card look like? It would be double Yano's. <laughs> uh, greatness personified, I should, Michael Cruz. I should actually, I kind of want to make that now. Can you do that again? Hey, friendos, if you can see any old school championship on anyone on the main roster, what title would you see and on who? Um, he would love to see the old Attitude Era WWE title on Kevin Owens. I want to see the WCW TV title that Matthew O'Day created for yes. WCW on Tyler Bate. Good. I would like to see. Was it the NWA that had uh, brass knuckles? Oh yeah, the brass knuckles championship yeah. on Dean Ambrose. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's good. I like that. That's a good answer. Um, oh, here we go. I like this. this is a good question. Catherine soon says Vince McMahon cashes in his presidential money in the bank. What are some of his executive orders? What executive orders would Vince McMahon? Dude, well, day would one. would there be a new federal bureau? That would be the fashion police. Oh, that's good. That's good. You know what? I wish, I wish we got this question another week because I could sit here all day. I could sit here all day issuing Vince McMahon executive orders. I know that would be fantastic. If well, we give like, me give me one, then I'll try to do it. Okay. Or you start out mellow Vince, and I'll do um, loud Vince. Um, shit, I had one too. I had one too. Uh, crap. No, you just put me on the spot. Okay. I had it and I Sorry. lost it. I had it and I lost it. I like this answer here from though from Just Perfect. He says the he would issue an executive order for the NFL's renamed the XFL. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, the uninvited ghost. Hey, friendos, if you could have a wrestler from the past time travel to the present and join a faction. Who would you choose and what faction? He'd choose Hillbilly Jim to join the Wyatt family. If you could have a wrestler from the past, Time Tower Pen, join a faction. <coughs> I would have um, uh, Frank Gotch and George Hackenschmidt join the Vaud Villains. That would be rad because those dudes apparently could really wrestle. Yeah. Like they were badasses. 
I'll do that. I would have old, like youngish Michael Hayes come forward and join the fashion police. <laughs> That's what I would do. Um, <clears throat> trying to think of someone who could join Sanity. Oh, you know what I was going to do? That's what I thought. That's what I was remembering. You know what I was going to do for my executive order for Vince? What? I was going to do my impression of him telling uh, Draws to puke. Oh. I don't know. I was like, for the human, yeah, for the human, health and human services department, you're going to, yeah, 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 puke. Stretch. Yeah, and he, he, like for the, for the, for, he for the education secretary, he would uh, demand that every day before kids do PE, they stretch. There you go, stretch. Oh, it's not really Vince. This is us. Yeah. One more question, then trivia. Yeah. Let's find a good one. All right, here's an interesting one. Jason White. Go for it. I personally think that the botch was a botch at the end. Oh, per, sorry. I personally don't think the botch was a botch at the end of the Battle Royal. I think AJ's feet hit first purposely, and he will win the next match next week with Harper. Shane will then come down to show footage of AJ's feet hitting first, thus starting their feud for Mania. Thoughts? It's the uh, way to look at things. It's... A, it's, it's, it's I don't think that's going to happen, but I can yeah. see why one might think that. Well, let me ask you this. If Jason's uh, scenario um, does play out, I don't think it would. Because if they if they established... Okay, look, here's the thing. We have to look at this from kayfabe point of view. If next week's match is to determine the winner of the number one contendership battle royal, then you would think that both those participants would have to sign a contract. Mm -hmm. And that contract would state that the winner of that match would move on to WrestleMania. Yes. So I don't think that they would do that because why have a match if Shane McMahon is going to come down? Well, they haven't announced a match yet. They just said that they would would determine the number one contender on SmackDown next week. Okay. Um, Here's my other problem with this. If Shane comes down and shows footage of AJ's feet hitting conclusively, why is it? Why? Well, how can what? What is AJ? What is AJ's problem? It's like I know. Okay, you literally just proved that I'm wrong about this. I might be pissed off that I lost when I was trying to con my way into saying I I won, or you know if I really did think I won, but now I see proof. There's not really Shane's not really jacking him there. It's like that's fair and square. Yeah. So I'm gonna say probably not, but that's that's not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, it's Jason. not a bad idea. Yeah. All right, trivia time. Yes. I have card in hand, so I'll ask first. Okay. Who won the 1993 Royal Rumble match? 93. Um, 93, I'll say... I feel like I should know this. Macho Man? Yokozuna. Oh, that makes all sense. Oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, who holds the record for the shortest WWE title reign in history? And keep in mind, this is like from 2009. Shortest WWE title reign in history. Well, it'd have to be one of the uh, hardcore titles, then, probably. Uh, Crash Holly. Um, Andre the Giant, 45 seconds. Interesting. Well, okay. So like, like, I, I read the question the way it was worded. But I guess they mean a world title reign? I would assume so. I did read the question. No, that's fine. As, as that's it fine. is written. That's fine. Who holds the rest of the record of shortest WWE title reign in history? Oh, WWE title as in that's the thing, not the title. I would think they mean the WWE. WWE not, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably wouldn't have said Andre, Andre anyway. Okay. I would have given if you would have said, oh, no. man, no, I knew that. Okay. No, no, no. All right, you, you're up. Uh, who appeared in the main event match for the first WWE in your house pay per view? What was the main event? 
Who was in it? In the very first uh, In Your House? Yes. In the very first In Your House, who was the main event? Yes. My brain is not thinking right now, but that's a really hard question. It I'm is. Gonna say, uh, I'm going to say Lex Luger, Bret Hart. Diesel versus Sid. <laughs> okay. I actually wasn't that far off. Um, which superstar was never managed by Mr. Fuji? Don Morocco, Big John Stud, or the Berserker? Who? Which of those three were not managed by I'm Mr. Stud. Fuji? You're correct. Give yourself a point. Trish Stratus has never locked lips with whom? The Rock, Mickey James, or Jamie Noble? Jamie Noble. I think that's right. That is right. Good yes. job. <clears throat> Uh, who was the first person in WWE to defeat Vladimir Kozlov in a televised match? And I know you weren't watching at the time, so good luck with this. Shawn Michaels. Fuck, how'd you get that? That's crazy. Good job. Just a guest. <coughs> All right, good job. <clears throat> uh, what WWE superstar was known as the Loose Cannon? Um... Did you take some Dayquil today? Dude, I honestly, I'm like, I'm fucking a loose cannon. Yeah. Um, Macho Man? Brian Pillman. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Probably should have known that. <laughs> My, I'm serious. I'm, no, I know. Yeah. I know. Oh, uh, let's see here. What were ECW Divas originally known as when the show launched on Sci-Fi in 2006? Wow. I have no clue. Um... I don't know. Vixens. No, I guess that makes sense. Does it? Not really. Okay. Um, when he returned to WWE in 2009, whom did Christian defeat in his first match? <coughs> Edge. Jack Swagger. <laughs> Not surprising. All right. When Mankind... Won his second WWE title. He defeated The Rock in what kind of match, which took place all over the arena? Oh yeah, the empty arena match. Very good. You got you two get, cards. You for get me. two cards, but you don't get my Steiner Brothers. Are we, are we doing little uh, title cards? I get to decide. No, you don't get the title. You get you get to choose one title card and one WCW card. Oh, here, give me title cards while you find WCW well, cards. Well, you get to, no, you have to choose blindly, you know that. Yeah, I know, that's what I was going to do. No, I choose for you. No, that's not choosing no, no, blindly. No, you choose it, but you don't get to see it. What Which crap, belt? What belt you get? Two times multiplier on the Cruiserweight Championship. <laughs> I like that you do the two times. Okay, let's see here. It's worth two two belts, two cards. Okay, you can't choose this one. All right. Here, I'll, I'll just Fan them out, and I'll turn my head. Okay. <laughs> Sid. I'm very happy about Sid. Yeah. However, unfortunately, every every week you lose because you can never have well, that's fine. the Steiner, Steiner brothers, but Scott Steiner is a dog. Picture. I know. I know. That's fine. That's the best. I've made peace with that. Brian Pillman, the loose cannon. What a bummer. Anyways, um, so I guess that means I have to write that second email now. Yep. Okay. I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, and thanks for watching you patrons out there stick around we're going to do a bonus episode you guys can check out if you're not watching the live stream you can check that out um, on the channel later on today and until next time we'll talk to you guys later bye